All right, guys, next job on the agenda is to set up the, uh, what's well, the last job on the agenda, actually, um, major job is to set up the DRO on the headstock so that uh, it's in a comfortable position that we can read while we're machining. It's in a comfortable position where we can, uh, we can hit the buttons as we need to. So first thing is I've put some timber chocks underneath to give me a rough idea of what the height is going to be. And I'm fairly comfortable where that it's, is at the moment. Um, I'm going to have to mount it on the change wheel guard, uh, which is an aluminium casting. Uh, so it's going to have to swing with the unit, or well, the unit's going to have to swing with it. So I'm going to put some slack into the cables for that to occur. Now we do get some bits and pieces in the uh, in the stocking filler, and uh, we do get an arm, and we get some brackets and some pivot pins. Uh, one of the pivot pins doesn't fit, so I've got a, an M10 that'll do the job for us. But I'm going to use this arrangement and modify it so that uh, we can fit that to the DRO. Um, I'll show you a couple of others that I've done on my other machines and you can see how I've set those up. All right, you've all probably seen this one before. This is the DRO unit that I have on the smaller lathe and that's just fixed. Uh, it's bolted down hard into the headstock and it's bolted up hard into the DRO unit itself. So no moving on that one there, it's fixed. And I'm really happy with that height. It's at a very, very comfortable height that I can see very quickly, very easy, very easy to get access to the uh, to the buttons. And that was worked out very well for that lathe. Right, let's head over to the mill and have a look at that one. Now I've used most of the hardware that came with the, uh, with the packaging on these ones, and these were purchased quite a few years ago. So we've used the arm, pivot points, We've used the pivoting brackets and we've mounted everything up and uh, it went together very, very well. Unfortunately, on this particular packet, there's bits and pieces that don't fit properly. There's, <laughs> there's socket editor cap screws that don't fit screw holes. There's all sorts of issues with it. So you've got to make that one up a little bit as you go. So we're still going to do a bit of a combination between what I've done on the mill and what I've done on the small lathe. All right, so we're going to mount it to this uh, aluminium casting, which is the the housing or the cover for the change wheel sets and uh, I've got a little bit of an issue in that if I was to bring some steel stock into the shed and it gives the, the post a whack the last thing I want to do is to bend up or crack this casting so we're going to put a, a little bit of a protective measure in place to stop that from happening or protect that from happening anyway and we'll show you that as we go um, the other issue I've got too and I would have preferred to have mounted this up solid but if you have a look the way they've got the bracketing mount it's on this silly silly angle it's going to make a compound angle so as i said i think we're going to use the existing brackets that have got the pivot brackets so that we can get this positioned exactly where we want it i would have preferred this to be nice and flat like the other dro's but anyway it is what it is and we'll work with it All right, we've just got some basic machining on this. Uh, we're going to use a bit of solid 30mm um, round bar. It's going to clean up the OD. Machine the end square, and uh, we'll drill the tap in one end, uh, M, uh, M10, for, uh, for one of the locking bolts.
All right, so I've just uh, got a bit of 8 mil plate that I've cut up on the bandsaw and machined, and uh, that's going to make up the base plate for our support. And we've got our centre column that we've uh, that we've machined up for the post. Now, one of the things that I've noticed on this, and it's with all castings, is that it has taper to create draft to get it out of the mould. And that's obviously reflected in this post as well. So it is over very, very slightly. It's less than half a degree, but it irks me. Um, it's over in this direction, but it's over in this direction as well, half a degree. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bore a hole in this base plate, make it a, a, a light press fit, and I can tap this around to get it squared up comfortably on the, uh, on the cover and then we can weld that in situ as it is. Then I can drill through, put our mounting screws into it, and do the mods to the arm. But we'll set up in the mill, we'll get this board out so it's a light, uh, light press fit, it's gonna hold itself, and I can move it around a little bit to get it all squared up. And as I said, we'll weld it out. All right, let's get into it. We're at the size now. If I've got to take any more off, I'll do it off the shaft just in the load a little bit of emery. Might need 0.01 removed, but uh, we'll see how that's going to fit up anyway. Righto, we've got that post within 90 degrees in this direction, and I've also got it at 90 degrees in that direction to the uh, to the headstock of the lathe. And that's quite tight in that uh, little press fit there. It took a little bit to get it to move, but uh, it's certainly stuck there. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do a weld on the inside there. I reckon that's going to look quite neat. So we'll get it tacked first, come back and just make sure it hasn't moved too far. If it has, we can then readjust and then we can finish that out. Sorry guys, missed the weld on that. I've just put a little tack in there. Now I've done the tack at 45 so that will allow me to get some adjustment in this direction or in this direction if, it's, uh, if it has moved. So we'll get that fold off flat and we'll sit it up and just see how it looks. All right, it required the tiniest little tap in both directions, but it's back to 90 degrees and it's spot on, so I'm happy with that. Uh, we'll get that welded out now and uh, start looking at trying to mount that, uh, that arm up. Right, so this cleaned up really well, and I've got quite a few good tacks in there. So that's not going anywhere, as I said, that was a very heavy press fit in there as well. So uh, it's locked in for good. I've checked it again, and uh, yeah, bang on 90 degrees. So very happy with that. All right, we'll move on and see what we're going to do about this arm. All right, I've got this centered up and positioned where I want it. I'm just going to use a, a 10 mil slot drill. I don't want to use a drill, I'm be concerned it might tend to. Uh, Make an octagon hole as they normally do when you're going through thin stuff. Probably be okay with the aluminium, but I'm going to go with uh, with a slot drill anyway. Alright, 
all done. We've short that up quite nicely now. Pop the hole into the uh, for the pivot. See how that's going to look. All right, let's see how this is going to look. So I'm still going to drill the bolt hole that holds down yet, but if it does swing that away. It does swing that away, and it does nod up and down. So I think that's going to be good like that. Get that marked up and uh, get a position, and then we can give it a, a paint, I think. But I think it's going to be a very comfortable height. There's no issues under here. We've still got plenty of room to work with. No issues getting to anything I need to get to. It's going to be its, uh, its resting spot. But as I said, we can move this around a bit to, uh, to move it out of the way if things are really crammed up. Alright, get some mounting holes drilled into the base of this. Get it fastened up. Alright, that's it uh, all finished off and mounted. All I really need to do is, is to paint it. Um, we do have some good articulation on this. We can move that around to where we want. And we also have the, the nodding function on here as well. We can nod that backwards and forwards, which works out well. Um, I did mention to you that I wanted to have some flexibility in this so that if it does cop a whack from something, it's not going to crack the casting. So we do have this arrangement here. Um, I've just got some simple um, springs mounted underneath the uh, socket header cap screws to give us that functionality. But it's quite rigid. Uh, it's not going to really go anywhere. And as I said, when I'm running, you know, we can press this to our heart's content and it's, uh, it's quite comfortable, it doesn't want to move. I've still got access to everything that I want to access to. I've still got full access to the top of the, uh, the headstock to put tooling in. So uh, it's worked out very well. It's at a very comfortable position too to work with. So uh, you're happy with that as well. So that's the Sino unit. Obviously it's a, it's a budget level DRO system. As I said, the whole setup was uh, well under $400 delivered to, uh, to Australia. And that's with the one meter scale and the 320 long scales. So for value for money, um, as I said, it's about half the price that I originally paid for the uh, milling machine um, DRO setup and the, uh, and the, and the uh, smaller lathe that DRO setup. There are more expensive units on the market. Obviously they, they, they will go into an industrial scale. I think this is more of a, a hobbyist type uh, arrangement, but still very capable for what I want to do. Um, this is also, I believe, well, this is actually a, a multi-purpose unit. You can use it for EDM, lathes, milling machines, wire cutting. There is a program set in there that you can program up for what particular machine that you're working on. So I have that set up for the um, for the lathe function because uh, when I first got it, I didn't have the taper function that was available to me until I actually uh, did set it up as a or, or reprogram for the uh, for the lathe functionality. But uh, very happy with my purchase. As I said, you saw the scales go in. I've run the um, the saddle backwards and forwards along the bed and. Uh, the uh, cross slide backwards and forwards. Uh, each time I've done that, I've done that dozens of times. It's always come back to the zero point on the dial indicator. And the measurements that I'm getting for lengths, although I can only measure uh, an inch at this stage, uh, it's totally repeatable. So I'm sort of hoping that I'm not going to have any issues with that, and uh, it's going to it's going to last it's going to last me out anyway. The buttons on these feel a little bit oil canny, I think sort of see them there. They are certainly positive. The uh, DRO arrangements that I have on the uh, mill and the, and the lathe, they seem to be a lot softer in the way that they press. I do give a little bip when you, uh, when you do um, hit the buttons. They, uh, they certainly let you know that, uh, that they have been touched. All right, we've got all the cables uh, hooked up for the scales. Let's turn it on. Let's see when it comes up, it tells us that it's uh, set up for lathe. So that's the cross slide operating. Very smooth. That's our saddle going backwards and forwards, up and down the bed. Very smooth. Once again, zero out. I must admit the bipping sounds a bit tinny with this, but it's, uh, it does the job though. As I said, this one's got some good functionality with it.